Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon, and welcome to The Post 43. What is your mission statement? Yes, I know. The phrase mission statement makes most of us want to groan. Because we have a series of organisations and institutions that use a mission statement that are well dodgy. Okay, so I well understand that when you hear the phrase mission statement, you think of those dodgy institutions, you think of particular religious organisations that attempt to manage their followers through a mission statement. And obviously, just to add a bit of disaster to the term, it also has a colonising imperative. So I absolutely understand thinking about the history of a mission statement. You might be saying, Tara, why are we here? And I understand your worry. But what I want to do today is focus on you, completely on you. And the reason why New Year's resolutions fail, and they always fail, and the reason why they fail is because we're starting at the wrong place. We're starting with goals. And actually, that's one step on. We'll be doing goals next week. What I need to do is focus on the foundation from which goals emerge. So goals without a foundation are like building a house in an earthquake zone. It might be a beautiful and attractive house, but it's just not going to be terribly stable and it's not going to be there for long. So before we work on the creation of goals, we need to have the goals based on something that's solid, that's strong, that's meaningful. And that foundation, yes, is a mission statement. Now, I've used a lot of the new research in this field. In the last five years, mission statements have been used for a diversity of organisations, and some of that literature is very strong. Yes, there is a slice of that literature that focuses and comes from religious organisations and particularly the Christian faiths. And that's fine if that's your vibe, if that's your area, that's great. There is a literature for you there. But the vlog this week is focusing on you. Just you. Who you are. What you believe in. And it's helping you work out why you matter. So the vlog this week has four parts. Firstly, we're going to look at what is a mission statement, then why create one, and that's an important structure. Then we're going to look at the problems that exist in mission statements, and we're going to finish off with the practical, the active bit, how you and me together, how we can create a mission statement. And look, you may want to have a bit of access to a pen and paper through this. You may want to pause the video at times. And for all my friends out there who are listening to this on their walk or watching it on a treadmill, that's fine. You might want to just watch it all the way through and then come back and write notes. Or you might just sort of pause and, and stop on your walk and write a couple of notes on your phone on the way through. But wherever you are, we start with you today in your present. No judgment, no evaluation. We start with you today. And this is a practical session. There are four parts. And let's do the first one. What is a mission statement? Okay. Now, a personal mission statement has its origins in Stephen Coveney's book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And of course, habit two is start with the end in mind. And that really is a crucial life lesson. When I read that, my entire life transformed. Start with the end in mind. And the key strategy, I think, to start with the end in mind is to create a mission statement because the mission statement is the beginning. You can't have an ending without a beginning. And a mission statement is a beginning with its eyes on the future, with its eyes on the end. A mission statement requires that you focus. Who do you want to be in terms of character? What do you want to contribute to the world? Now, you choose. You choose the values and you choose the principles that are meaningful to you. 
If the word mission statement worries you, and I understand particularly the colonial undertones, overtones that exist in that phrase, and that's making you uncomfortable, then I'm very comfortable to change the word mission statement and use the word credo. That's a bit edgy. Credo or philosophy or indeed your personal purpose statement, which I like a lot. The function of a mission statement is to create an alignment in your life, an alignment between vision, purposes, and your value. A mission statement frames the decisions that you make in your life. It is a lens, if you will. It's an outlook. It provides you with the direction to your future. Think about it this way. Whenever any of us get on a bus, or get on a train, or even get on an aeroplane, we get on to that mode of transportation knowing where we are going to go. But often, if you think about it, we don't live our lives with that degree of attention and care. You know, like, we, we don't get on a bike not knowing where we're going to go on the bike, right? We know. But think about our daily lives. We get up, we have a bucket of coffee, and we hope for the best. And that's our working day. But to start to move with meaning, we have to know where we're going and we have to know why we're going. And that's, of course, your mission statement. And yes, there'll be craziness and interruptions in that mission statement. Absolutely. You know, just like there are interruptions, there's turbulence on a flight or a bit of livestock gets in, gets in front of a train, or there might be an accident on your bus route, yeah? And all those interruptions do happen. But you get there because through all the obstacles and the problems, you know when you start, when and how you're going to finish. So the mission statement is a vision, a vista, a visualization of who you would like to be and where you would like to go. The values of your life, if you will. And look, yes, really bad stuff will happen. It happens to all of us. All of us are tested, ridiculed, bullied, and undermined. Absolutely. But you hold on to you, your mission statement because that allows you to move through the course of your life. And to be frank with you, when bad stuff happens, a mission statement gives you a reason for living, a reason for working, a reason to continue. And mission statements are needed because everything in our life is created twice. And by that I mean we create something in our lives firstly in our minds. We have a mental image of something. So we create something mentally first and after we've done that, we then create it physically in the world. So everything we create is created twice. And therefore, we require that mental form to enable the physical form. And if you doubt any of the arguments I'm making today, and I'm sure you do, but think about the alternatives here, beginning with no end in mind at all, not envisioning a future, letting life happen, man, and basically living your life like one of those random plastic bags that sort of blows about in shopping centre car parks. That's how most of us sort of live. And if you don't have a mission statement, and by the way, this is the bit that convinced me, if you don't have a mission statement, then other people's mission statements will be deployed and activated on you. So you end up living other people's lives and priorities. So a mission statement is a game plan. It's a vision. It's also a vista of your destination. And if you need another justification for a mission statement, I really want to summon something. I must not get upset, but I want to summon the legendary Viktor Frankl, who was, of course, imprisoned in death camps by the Nazis. But what made Frankl so extraordinary and he was extraordinary in so many ways but what made him so extraordinary is he actually studied wow what allowed some prisoners to survive 
in the death camps. And when he studied what enabled that survival, he discovered that the physical health of the prisoners was a secondary influence. The survival instinct of the inmates was of secondary influence. This is extraordinary. The people who survived had a sense of purpose, had a sense of the future. And of course, this became his remarkable book, Man's Search for Meaning. So the survivors had a sense that important work was yet to be done. So think about this. The survivors of the final solution asked key questions. What is life asking of me? What is my responsibility in this situation? What kind of future contribution can I make? Now, Viktor Frankl was remarkable, but we also, I suppose, have to remember that great line from Friedrich Nietzsche as well. He who has a why can live with any what. End of quote. So if we're hollow, if we have no meaning, if we have no purpose, no vision, no sense of the future, then that seeps into our minds and it seeps into our bodies. So what a mission statement does is it provides you with a sense, a shape to and of your future. It also gives you hope and meaning in dark times. So the mission statement has two parts. It is a vision our sense of the future, who we are, what we could become, but also principles, the principles by which we live, the means of our living. And of course, as I've stated, and this is crucial, the writing down of the mission statement is absolutely crucial. Because remember, we take an idea, we create it once in our mind, but we also then, from that, must create it a second time in the physical world. And that's why writing matters so much to the planet, to be honest, because it allows an idea to become physical. So a strong mission statement, you can absolutely hold it through your life. It doesn't mean they don't change. They certainly do change, and they change particularly as we get older. But the mission statement, when we are writing them, it must appear timeless. Remember, it's not about goals. Goals change. We're doing goals next week. Goals change. Goals are also situation specific, whereas a mission statement should be able to move through the changes of your life. And look, there are particular attributes to a mission statement that encompass really the three most important areas of our lives. So it covers the public life, the private life, but also our inner or interior life. Now, public life, of course, emerges through our interaction with others. Private life is when we are alone or with our friends, with our family members. But then, of course, we get to our inner life that we rarely think about or talk about. And in our inner life, we explore our motivations. We reflect on our thoughts, the problems that dominate and dog our lives, but also our conscience, our imagination, and our self-awareness. The mission statement, and this is the crucial bit, team, the mission statement starts inside out, inside out. It starts with your inner life, and then it moves to your private life, and then your public life. So as you can see, the mission statement is profound work. It is deep, deep work. It also grants you perspective, and it takes time, yes, but it does allow you to understand time as it passes. And it also allows you, and this is the crucial moment for me as well, it allows you to understand how your current habits, your current behaviours are antithetical to what you ask of yourself in your inner life. So with this deep work, we can all uncover selfishness and self-absorption and, crucially, the disconnections between our private and our public life.
So to form a mission statement, start to think about what makes you, you, hello, what makes you unique? What are your gifts? What is your potential? And also, if you're finding that all a bit difficult, think about and study the lives of the people that inspire you. Why do they inspire you? What do you get from that inspiration? So this means we start to focus on the best of ourselves, our highest principles. And remember that great statement from Robert Schuller, I think, quote, I love this, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you give your life to? If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you give your life to? Yeah. So as you can see, this is deep stuff. This is an inside out approach. I know this seems weird in our times because everything's about the exterior. Everything's about out, out, out influences, high duck influences. And instead, really, we need to be doing the interior work. Put another way, for those of us who have lived some life and also lived some life after huge disappointments, huge tragedies in our lives, when, you know, things happen and you really think I've sort of died here. A lot of me has died at this moment. After those sort of life and death events, it is crucial to ask yourself, what is the purpose of my life today? And if today was the first day of the rest of my life, what would I do with the time? So at a point of disappointment or failure or tragedy, the goal is to go inward, not outward. For something that is so important, so meaningful, why don't people do this? Well, the answer is it takes a bit of time and we're all very, very busy and a mission statement has no deadline and the rest of our lives sort of have deadlines. But it also takes some pretty deep reflection because you have to make a stand this is who I am. These are my values. This is what is important to me. This is what life is for me. And of course, most of us, and I include myself in this, absolutely, most of us live our lives in a gap, a really awkward and uncomfortable gap. So we have our ideals and our deepest values. And then we have what we actually do with our day. And the gap between those two realities can disturb us, make us feel unsettled, make us feel like a bit of a fraud. And of course, what we do therefore is we displace our ideas and our values by not writing them down. Remember, we create them here and then we create them physically in the world. And if we don't write them down, then we can sort of pretend that the ideas and values don't exist and this gap between what we believe in and what we're actually doing, that that gap doesn't exist. And of course, that's why that gap makes a lot of people feel pretty terrible most of the time, because we know the sort of person that we are and we know how we're spending our day. And that contradiction hurts us and hurts us deeply. Therefore, I've talked about, okay, maybe I've convinced you about what is a mission statement. Let's now go to why I think now is the time particularly to create this mission statement. Most of us live our lives by intention, right? So we tend to judge ourselves by our intentions, but we judge other people by their outcomes, right? So we go, gee, they failed. That's terrible. Imagine them doing that. But of course, we judge ourselves by our intentions in the world. So that means we live personally in gonna, coulda, shoulda, what I'm gonna do rather than what I have done. And particularly post the pandemic, those intentions and, and living and judging ourselves by intentions rather than outcomes, it makes a lot of sense because what's happened post the pandemic is most of us are living in a fair amount of anger and also a lot of fear. The failures, the systematic failures, catastrophic failures of the systems that we used to believe in that would help us that would support us. So if you think about it, so much of what we're living in and living through at the moment is external. 
what those people, what those institutions over there are doing to us. So we're living through a blame, shame nightmare with all these people outside of us are hurting us and we are victims, right? And I understand that, makes a lot of sense. We've lived through some really terrible times. But the problem is that that mode of thinking does not lead to intrinsic motivation. It leaves us endlessly displacing ourselves on these external variables, right? Focusing on issues and topics and people over which we have no control. So a mission statement is about us and it works from the inside out. Intrinsic motivation rather than extrinsic motivation. And it demands that we confirm who we are and what we stand for in writing. We create it in our minds and then we create it in the physical world. Okay, now let's go to our third section, the problems <laughs> and challenges with mission statements. And there are many. And of course, a large chunk of the literature about mission statements is from a Christian perspective. And I have enormous respect for all faith structures. If that's your faith structure, you'll find some very good literature about mission statements from a Christian perspective. But obviously, for most of the population of the world, that is not our priority. And it doesn't have to be this way. A personal mission statement needs to start with you, with me, with us. And it begins through intrinsic motivation and then from that intrinsic motivation it gently and carefully moves outward to extrinsic motivation and that has value I think and the key importantly is not to connect not to connect your personal mission statement with say your workplace mission statement or your religious organizations mission statements lots of organizations have a mission statement I respect that that's great but it's very important that you do not align or make your individual mission statement fit with those other organizational structures this has to be about you and it has to be about your relationship with the world. So the personal mission statement at the moment is most used in two particular areas. Firstly, in Christian organizations, but also, of course, in leadership training. Not the two best examples on our, in our culture at the moment, but what I'm going to argue is there is value in this beyond leadership and beyond Christianity to think about you, to think about your foundation. And that will allow you to clarify your values and then move your values to actions. So a personal mission statement is a short statement. It defines your purpose in life. Who are you? What do you stand for? And it is, if you will, the constitution of your life, who you are now, who you will become. And look, you may fail. We all do every day. But the thing about failure is we can then return to the mission statement and go again because we've already done the hard work, the deep work to work out what are our core values and beliefs. The goal, therefore, is to live a purpose driven life life instead of being thrown about by life and therefore let's finish off today and thank you for joining me on this journey has this been exciting uh, let's finish off with let's do this let's actually create a mission statement so if you've got a bit of paper got a pen this is the time to use it now there are lots of ways and strategies to create a mission statement I'm going to talk about today the absolute easiest one and I'll give you some trigger sentences that might provoke this interior work so what I'd ask that you do for me and this is how I did mine by the way is sit down for 10 minutes and look you might have a bit of music playing but just for 10 minutes just relax and sit in silence or with music and just breathe and just get yourself sort of calm, right? Do that just for 10 minutes for me. Then for the next 10 minutes, I want you to take out two big bits of paper. So you've got two bits of paper. I did this on the floor, but I do a lot of stuff on the floor in my life. So put out two bits of paper and on one bit of paper, I want you to write down your feelings right now. What are your feelings? Put that on one bit of paper. And on the second bit of paper, I want you to list 
what's important to you right now feelings what's important to you right now and give yourself again 10 minutes to do that and time yourself and at the end of 10 minutes I want you to stop then I want you to look at both those bits of paper does that list capture who you are does it give you a, a sense of purpose do you see yourself what's important to you and of course that is really the first draft of your mission statement that's it so we don't invent a mission statement we discover a mission statement because we look at what is already within us so it's a real Dorothy Wizard of Oz moment right so Dorothy could go home whenever she chose the power was within her right she didn't need no wizard okay you don't need no wizard the mission statement is within you today now so what we do is we're logging our feelings we're paying attention to our feelings and what we're doing is we're following our feelings and we're treating them, if you will, like a rope that we hold onto as we move down a hill or move down a set of stairs, right? So we're following the feeling and at the base of the feeling, you will find your sense of purpose. So a mission statement is your very core, the center of you. It is your also your desired self. A mission statement must lift you and improve you. So where does this sense of self for you come from? This is the nuggety bit. This is the honest bit. Does your sense of self come from how you look? Does it come from your money, your bank account, your talent, your ability to talk? your creativity now no judgment here be really really honest where does your sense of self and sense of value come from put another way if this is more helpful what would frighten you if you lost it is your identity based on a particular job a particular mode of employment is work the core of your life and how do you make key decisions in your life where does that information come from so think about it what moves you to make a decision where do you derive the information for that decision and how do you gain a sense of self through that decision so these questions allow us all to configure the center of our lives so a mission statement is not a list of lifetime goals a mission statement is a lot deeper it's not about external goals things to buy things to have and of course another error with mission statements is that they're incredibly selfish and narcissistic and the self focuses on what you know the stuff that the self can buy I want to have this I want to be like this now that's not the work of mission statements they're meaningful because they provide you with some stability and some peace if it is useful I'll give you a few starter sentences so you can finish these sentences and that's your mission statement I approach each day with blank I treat people with blank I will keep blank as the center of my life my family and friends are blank my work is blank my role as a citizen in the world is blank so to give you a, a, a short a short example of a mission statement a one sentence mission statement I want to activate Norman Schwarzkopf who was of course a general in the Gulf War and he was asked how he would describe his life and he summoned his mission statement in response he described himself as quote a good soldier who serves his country and loves his family end of quote there it is think about this sentence 
goodness, service, multiple roles of a man. So mission statements are about long-term thinking and long-term planning. So here is my mission statement. Here we go. This is the one I live with. Quote, I act with decency and compassion, making decisions through evidence rather than ideology or assumptions. I approach all relationships with care, engagement and active listening. I read and write to enable personal reflection and provide alternative ways of thinking for others. I am not wedded to outcomes, but value space, place, silence, conversation and laughter. My role is to activate agency, choice and alternatives for others. I live to serve, read, think and write. I will not serve ignorance, fear, opinions or a vibe. I am proactive, not reactive. I choose courage over comfort. That's my mission statement. Now I read that every morning and I'm having to make a lot of very big decisions in my life at the moment and I'm always reading that statement before I make those crucial decisions. So if you need any further triggers to get you going on your mission statement, think about what is important in your life? What are your greatest strengths? What are your greatest talents? If you had unlimited time and resources, what would you do with them? Who is the person who's made the most positive impact in your life? What sort of person do you want to become? What are the principles you would like to live by? What have been your happiest moments? How do you want to be remembered? How do you want to serve other people through your life? So any of those questions can trigger your mission statement. So team, why this matters, and to put it into my language, why all of this matters is it's asking that all of us live a proactive rather than reactive life. So your personal mission statement must be simple, it must be brief, it's got to be clear, it's got to be concise, one sentence, three sentences, seven sentences, keep it positive if you can, and focus on what you want to become. Do not present the negative statements, flip them, invert them into a positive statement. And yes, make them emotional. This is emotional. This is a vision of your entire life. If that's not emotional, I don't know what is. And also those emotions must propel action. They must propel and trigger meaning. And it's also got to be relevant to daily decision making, but also future oriented. So try to include areas to improve, make them aspirational and identify what has made you great in the past. Where are your most important successes? So you're identifying your talents, what's your ideal self, but also your contribution to the world. So as you can see, and this is an old fashioned phrase, this mission statements Focus on character, what you want to contribute. This is not about goals. This is big picture stuff. And let me explain why this matters so much. Bronnie Ware worked in palliative care. So she was caring for patients in the last 12 weeks of their life. And she reported, wow, the most common five regrets expressed by people at the end of their lives. And here are those regrets. I wished I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life that other people expected of me. I wish I didn't work so hard. I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. 
I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. And the last one, I wish I'd let myself be happier. So therefore, when we take a pause in life and we create a mission statement, it's a way to stop regrets. It's also a way to ensure that the goals that we're going to be developing next week come from something. And they come from something that's intrinsic, not extrinsic. We can certainly link goals to outputs that are meaningful, that create motivation. Absolutely. But who do you want to become? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be with you on that journey? What do you want to do? What do you want to have a go at? And of course, I suppose, what is the meaning in your daily life? So your homework for this week is to write a mission statement. Now, it may be one sentence. It may be seven. So share it if you would like in the comments. I'm going to put my mission statement in the comments. But then from there, that will allow us to think about the last year, the last five years, and the next five years in front of us. And really ask yourself, look at your life and ask yourself, have you been living from this foundation of your mission statement? So whatever your answer is there, that answer is important. If you haven't been living from a mission statement, it is time to make change. And if you have been living authentically, then it is a moment to intensify, to enhance and to improve. And so I wanted to finish today with a warning, a warning that's come from a 90 year old man. Can I say a very famous 90 year old man, the legend that is William, yes, Bill Shatner, Captain Kirk himself. And at 90, he stated, quote, last year, I had a life changing experience. I went to space after decades of playing an iconic science fiction character who was exploring the universe. I thought I would experience a deep connection with the immensity all around us, a deep call for endless exploration. I was absolutely wrong. The strongest feeling that dominated everything else by far was the deepest grief that I had ever experienced. This was an immensely powerful awakening for me. It filled me with sadness. I realized we'd spent decades, if not centuries, being obsessed with looking away, with looking outside. I did my share of popularizing the idea that space was the final frontier. But I had to get to space to understand that Earth is and will stay our only home and that we have been ravaging it relentlessly, making it uninhabitable. End of quote. This is a powerful moment of interior work, reflection to enable a mission statement. And if a 90 year old Bill Shatner can reflect on his life and make a change and make an awakening, then we can too. And your homework this week is to use some of the strategies in the post this week to create one sentence or seven that is your mission statement. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.